I'm here to talk to you all today a little bit about empathy and humility, which I realize coming from a cisgendered white guy seems a little rich, uh, but I promise I recognize the privilege that I have and I do my very best uh, to use it for good. So many, many years ago at this point, I was back home visiting my parents in Massachusetts and I needed to run an errand with my brother and sister-in-law. We hopped in my dad's truck. I started backing out of the driveway and I heard this loud crunch. Uh, and from the back seat, my sister-in-law very meekly says, oh, that was my car. Uh, and in that moment, I was absolutely furious. Like, why didn't she tell me her car was there? Like, what the hell? Like, why would you just let me back into your car? Uh, and the reality there is that I was angry with myself, right? I was in direct control of the vehicle. I wanted to direct that anger somewhere. She was an easy target. Fast forward to ran the errand, picked up the, the parts to repair the car. I'm in the garage replacing her headlight and my father walks downstairs into the garage. My father was a master sergeant in the United States uh, Air Force. Very loud man, uh, very angry man on occasion. So I'm gearing up for like the shouting match of my life, right? I'm, I'm ready to get into it with this man. And he said something, and I don't recall what it was, but what I do remember is that it made me laugh. In that moment, he diffused the entire situation with like a single sentence. What he did for me was he met me where I was and showed me some empathy and humility. So what is humility then? I really like this uh, quote here, which I think gets right to the heart of it. Um, to err is human, we can ignore the second part of the quote for now, we'll get into that a little later. We're all fallible, right? We're going to make mistakes, it's unavoidable. What we should strive to do is give each other the space to be human, right? Show some humility and allow us to, allow each other to make those mistakes. My dad's humility was in seeing my need to stop beating the hell out of myself for backing into my sister-in-law's car and remind me that like, look, it's fine. You're replacing the part, nobody was hurt that everything is okay. We've encountered this, I'm sure, as engineers in a multitude of meetings or uh, issues we've had at work, right? Where maybe someone is dominating the conversation or steamrolling your ideas. We should really strive to make space for everybody to participate equally, right? Being shown humility in those moments encourages everybody to bring what they have to the table. So if humility has all of these great benefits, why don't we see more of it? Why does it feel so hard to put into practice? The answer is fairly complicated. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to distill it down to a few major points. The first of which is that we as humans do not like being wrong. Catherine Schultz gave a wonderful TED talk in 2011 entitled On Being Wrong, in which she discusses being wrong and the negative feelings and connotations around it. Some of the interesting points from that talk are that moment to moment, humans cannot recognize being wrong. In the moment, being wrong feels exactly like being right. It's only after the fact that we discover that we were wrong. And she uses the analogy of Wiley e. Coyote running off the cliff, right? We've all seen him charge headlong off a cliff. There's nothing, everything's fine. Now he looks down, there's no ground, he falls. It's very funny, we all laugh. So why does it feel bad to be wrong, right? If, if we don't have a good way to mark if we're wrong in the moment and we see it after the fact, why is there this negative feeling around it? Catherine Schultz suggests this is largely cultural and at least in the US, it's reinforced uh, pretty heavily through our school system. Right? I'm sure if we've all gone through the US school system, we remember from a really young age, recognizing that good grades are good and bad grades are bad. Right? Beyond that, if you get bad grades, you are a bad person. You're not studying hard enough, you're not smart enough, you're not trying hard enough, like any number of these things right, are, are, is really drilled into you from a young age. This particularly impacts underrepresented groups who, also, who already have a number of hurdles that they're trying to overcome. Uh, and as engineers, we also feel this really acutely as a consequence of putting a lot of ourselves into our work, right? Coding is a creative endeavor. We expend a lot of energy creating code to solve interesting business problems. We put a lot of ourselves into it. So introducing a bug or causing a production outage can feel like a, a real like personal crisis. But the reality is like, it's fine, right? Like I, I know for a fact I have 
brought down production environments. I've introduced bugs in code. I will continue to do so, right? It's a part of being human. And typically, your team members and fellow engineers are really forgiving, right? We're, we are all fallible. To forgive is divine. People tend to extend that grace. But what sticks with us are when people don't forgive us, right? So if mistakes happen and we would like to respond with empathy uh, and humility, we, we have to like really, really focus on, on making that space, right? And there's a few ways we can respond in a moment when we make a mistake. We can apologize sincerely and set about fixing the problem. We can make a grand gesture of an apology, or we can double down and like really dig our heels in and, and like stick to our scruples, I guess, as it were. Uh, Dr. Brene Brown uh, has a TED talk called Listening to Shame, in which she discusses the shame that we might feel when trying to make an apology, right? So if we've made a mistake and we are trying to apologize, apologizing is a very vulnerable thing, and that can lead to a situation where you feel a deep sense of shame at, at having caused whatever the, whatever the issue is. I think that shame is sort of the shared root of the grand apology, as it were, and doubling down. So you can imagine when you're feeling that shame, your nervous system it triggers what is similar to a fight or flight response, right? In this case, the double down would be the fight response. You are, or I am a good person. Good people don't make mistakes. Therefore, I must not have made a mistake. This must be something else, right? You really dig your heels in and assert like, no, no, I can't be wrong because I'm a good person. Similarly, the flight situation would be the grand apology, right? As in the flight response, we want to put as much distance between ourselves and the situation as possible. We feel that we are good people, and good people don't hurt others or cause these kinds of problems. And so we, we make this grand gesture of, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I can't believe I did this. And we go on and on trying to convince the other person or people that like, no, 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 we're good people. And like, we promised that we wouldn't, we wouldn't do this. The reality is that neither of these responses are helpful or productive, and both put the wronged person or people in a worse situation. And this is particularly harmful, again, for underrepresented groups who have already had to guard themselves against societal ails and overcome innumerable hurdles just to get a seat at the table. So how do we navigate this space, right? Like it feels really difficult to do as a human. It feels difficult to do as an engineer. What, what can we possibly do to try to improve how we, we navigate these situations? And the reality is you just have to get comfortable with being wrong, right? We're gonna get it wrong more frequently than we would like and you, you just have to get comfortable with it. Fortunately, as engineers, we have a couple of tools that can really help us put this into practice, right? One. We can lean into our curiosity. As engineers, we're all naturally curious people, and we can use that curiosity to, as a path to empathy, right? Ask probing questions, like really lean into the, the why and the how. And we have a, a regular mechanism that I think most of us probably use day to day to help us practice that in the form of pull requests. Pull requests are an excellent way to practice showing empathy and humility to your fellow engineers, right? I have some code that I've written. I put it up for review. If someone leaves a critical comment, I can practice some empathy and humility and really think about like, okay, well, why are they pointing this out? Surely it's not because I am a bad person. There's just something with the code. And on the flip side of that coin, if you are giving feedback on a pull request, you can also practice empathy and humility, right? Perhaps this person is a more junior engineer. Perhaps they're not as familiar with the particular domain. Instead of just saying, like, this is wrong or this is bad or, like, I've seen comments that are just, like, rewrite this, provide some context, right? Like, hey, I see what you've done here and this looks really elegant, but long-term maintainability might be a problem. In this case, maybe we forego the elegance for something that is a slightly longer but more readable and more maintainable over time. This hopefully then translates out into the broader team and then working culture. Uh, and I realize that that can be a bit of a stretch, particularly with larger organizations, but like start small, culture comes from the ground up, and hopefully over time, you have a well-oiled machine of empathy and humility, at least on your team. 
Here are some key takeaways that I would like for you all to walk away with. Um, please remember, I am not an expert. I'm just a guy, uh, and I'm passionate about engineer health, team health, people's health overall, and uh, DEI initiatives. Hopefully, you all learned something today. Thanks a lot. And here are some resources.